Good evening to every one of you. Your Excellency Julia Bishop, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Australia, His Excellency Bryce Hutchison, High Commissioner of Australia, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure I extend a warm welcome to Honorable Julia Bishop, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Australia to Sri Lanka. The visit is significant since it coincides with the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Sri Lanka and Australia. The people-to-people -people links are the bedrock of our bilateral relations between Sri Lanka and Australia. The presence of over 150,000, but I was corrected, is 174,000 Australians of Sri Lankan origin has provided a human bridge between the two countries. This year, uh, the year of 70th anniversary of our diplomatic relations have generated a new momentum in our long-standing relationship with a series of recent high-level visits of His Excellency President Maitri Palasurisena undertook a state visit and the Honorable Prime Minister Rani Vikram Singh undertook an official visit to Australia this year. The fruitful outcomes of these visits would serve as a roadmap for our cooperation in years ahead. Foreign Minister Julia Bishop and I just concluded a productive discussions on ways and means of further enhancing our bilateral cooperations in areas of mutual interest, including economic partnership, development cooperation, combating people smuggling, educating and skill development, tourism, reconciliation, and the role by overseas Sri Lankans in development of Sri Lanka. We also discussed on regional security challenges, including maritime security, as well as cooperation in multilateral fora. Sri Lanka's economic ties with Australia have now transformed itself into a dynamic partnership due to the growing trade, investments, and new business interests. I extend an invitation to Australian investors to take full advantage of Sri Lanka's transforming itself into an important, viable logistical hub in the east-west maritime area. I express, I express my deep appreciation for the Australian development assistance received for several decades, including under the Colombo Plan. Sri Lanka is also thankful for the opportunities awarded for postgraduate studies to Sri Lanka public officials through Australia Awards, which is coming under the purview of your Honourable Foreign Minister Julia Bishop. We also discussed on enhancing cooperation in technical and vocational education and training to empower young Sri Lankans. Foreign Minister Julia Bishop and I discussed on promotion of tourism between the two countries. I welcome Australia's assistance in the planning and the development of Sri Lanka's tourism industry. We explored the opportunities to collaborate in promoting ecotourism and community-based tourism. I am pleased to inform that Sri Lankan Airlines will commence its operations to Melbourne with, with effect from October the winter 2017. I take this opportunity to express my appreciation to Foreign Minister Julia Bishop for her keen interest in reaching out to Sri Lankan Australians and encouraging them to work with the government of Sri Lanka towards common objectives. Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka continues to encourage overseas Sri Lankans to contribute to Sri Lanka's economic development strengthening of Sri Lankan economy and inclusive growth are important factors for ensuring long-term peace, stability, and non-recurrence of conflict. It is a happy coincidence that Foreign Minister of Singapore, Vivian Balakrishnan, and Foreign Minister Julia Bishop are visiting Sri Lanka at the same time. I'm glad to inform that we have made use of this opportunity to meet together tomorrow to discuss issues of common interest. Foreign Minister Julia Bishop will pay a courtesy call on the President, Maithi Palasirisena, and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe tomorrow. Sri Lanka values the long-standing friendship and cooperation with Australia. I'm confident that the visit of Foreign Minister Julia Bishop will further enhance our warm and friendly relations and serve as a catalyst to expand our partnership in multifaceted areas in years, years ahead. I wish Minister Julia Bishop and her delegation a very pleasant stay in Sri Lanka. Thank you. Ravi, thank you very much for your very warm welcome. And may I extend my personal congratulations to you on your appointment as 
Sri Lanka's Minister for Foreign Affairs, and I look forward to working closely with you as we enhance this already strong friendship and partnership. It is indeed a milestone year, 70 years since diplomatic relations were established between Australia and Sri Lanka. And over that period, we have been firm and consistent friends. Uh, through good times and bad times, Australia has supported Sri Lanka in its efforts to be a more peaceful and more prosperous country, uh, notwithstanding the extraordinary challenges that you have faced from time to time. Our 70th year of diplomatic relations was marked by high-level visits. Your President, your Prime Minister, your Deputy Foreign Minister were all very welcome in Australia. And uh, we spoke earlier about the number of Sri Lankans or people living in Australia of Sri Lankan heritage and our most recent census tells us that it is about 170,000. So what an extraordinary uh, building block for a friendship between two nations that the diaspora in Australia is so strong and vibrant and makes such a significant contribution to our society. Australia is one of the most successful multicultural nations on earth and we have welcomed people from all over the world who have integrated into our community. And we are delighted that so many Sri Lankans have found a home in Australia. But the diaspora is important for your ongoing peace, prosperity, and economic growth. And we certainly encourage the Sri Lankan diaspora in Australia to reach out to the government of Sri Lanka, to the people of Sri Lanka, and do what they can to contribute to your peace and prosperity. Our educational links are long-standing. Uh, we welcomed to Australia many Sri Lankans under the Colombo Plan of the 1950s and 1960s. In fact, in the last 50 years, we believe that about 30,000 Sri Lankans have gained an Australian qualification. And uh, they are now the scientists, the researchers, the community leaders, the politicians, uh, the business leaders here in Sri Lanka. We uh, borrowed the name Colombo Plan from you with your permission and in 2014 we commenced what we call the new Colombo Plan whereby we send with government support Australian undergraduates to live and study and undertake work experience in countries in our region. And from 2015 to the end of this year, 300 Australian students will have lived and studied in Sri Lanka under the new Colombo plan. So this student exchange, um, given that there are about 7,500 or 7,600 Sri Lankan students currently enrolled in Australia, this student exchange will ensure that this connection, this friendship endures. We had a very positive discussion about our areas of cooperation from science and health and education to defence, security, uh, combating transnational crime, counter-terrorism. Uh, we deeply appreciate your support in combating people smuggling. And together, Australia and Sri Lanka have cooperated in terms of maritime security. We're both members of the Indian Ocean Rim Association and we work together with other Indian Ocean Rim countries to ensure that this is a peaceful and stable and secure region. We couldn't do it without Sri Lanka's involvement and input. We also discussed the reconciliation process here in Sri Lanka. And Australia will continue to offer constructive support to the government of Sri Lanka as you implement the reconciliation agenda in all its different manifestations. We encourage you because we know that it will be in the long-term interests of this country. The long-term peace and prosperity will depend upon a successful implementation of the reconciliation process in terms of the reconstruction work that needs to be done, uh, the political reforms, um, reforms in relation to uh, land ownership and the like. And we are there to assist, support, advise, share experiences. And we had a very positive and constructive discussion in that regard. Uh, we are also uh, determined to ensure that our economic partnership continues to grow. There is boundless opportunity for a growing economy in Sri Lanka to work more closely with Australia. Australia is 
the 13th largest economy in the world. We're in our 26th consecutive year of economic growth. And we know that there are many Australian businesses, many Australian firms who are keen to invest in Sri Lanka, and we will work together to ensure that there's increased trade and investment between our two countries across a diverse range of areas. Tourism is a huge potential, and we welcome a direct flight uh, Colombo, Melbourne. I come from Perth. I'm also looking for a direct flight Colombo, Perth, because I would visit this beautiful city more often if that were the case. So I encourage um, our airlines to look into a greater connectivity between Australia and Sri Lanka. And I know that many Australian tourists, in fact, 75,000 Australians uh, last year, came to Sri Lanka as tourists and had a wonderful experience. So it's been a, a most productive meeting. I'm looking forward to a working dinner this evening and also to meeting the President and the Prime Minister tomorrow. This is an important relationship in our region. It's an important relationship for our two peoples and one which will surely endure as we share values and increasingly uh, align our outlook. We are democracies. We are committed to the rule of law. We're committed to free people, free markets and long may this friendship, this partnership prosper and flourish. Thank you, Ravi, for your very warm welcome to me and my delegation. Now, the exchange of letter of intent for cooperation on eliminate dengue program between the Ministry of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine of Sri Lanka and Monash University of Australia will take place. I have the honor to invite Honorable Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna, Minister of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine of Sri Lanka, to join Honorable Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Sri Lanka and Australia to witness the exchange of letters. I'm pleased to invite Mr. Janaka Sugatadasa, Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine of Sri Lanka, and Professor Scott Onel of Monash University to exchange the letters. Thank you, Mr. Sugatadasa and Professor Onel. I now have the honor to invite Honorable Julie Bishop, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Australia, and Honorable Dr. Rajita Senaratna, Minister of Health, Nutrition, and Indigenous Medicine of Sri Lanka, to make their remarks on this program. Ministers, Professor O'Neill, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be back here in Colombo to meet with my counterpart, the Foreign Minister but also to make an important announcement uh, that we believe will be of considerable assistance here in Sri Lanka. When the Sri Lankan president came to Australia earlier this year, he asked if Australia would be able to assist in a crisis that was occurring in Sri Lanka at the time in relation to the impact of dengue fever here in Sri Lanka. And we readily agreed to provide whatever assistance we could. The World Health Organization has indicated that there is something like 50 to 100 million infections um, from dengue fever each year in over 100 countries, which essentially means that half the world's population could be at risk. We know that dengue fever has taken a heavy toll here in Sri Lanka. 100,000 infections and tragically about 250 people have died and we extend our deepest sympathies to all those who have been affected by this. We uh, are committed to assisting Sri Lanka in eradicating uh, dengue and we have two announcements to, date to make today. Uh, one is uh, an investment in the World Health Organization, about 58 million rupees uh, 500,000 Australian dollars to work with the World Health Organization here in Sri Lanka to deal with the immediate crisis, the immediate impact, uh, which will be um, helping in eradication and prevention and working in hospitals and case management and hospital triage and the like and education and public awareness. Secondly, a longer term 
a project uh, which we believe will make a significant difference to eradicating uh, dengue longer term is this partnership with Monash University and with the Sri Lanka Ministry of Health. Uh, Monash University has been pioneering a um, plan to eliminate dengue. Their program is eliminate dengue. And it's using the um, Wolbachia bacteria in mosquitoes, which prevents the transmission of the dengue virus between humans. The research has been piloted in North Queensland, in tropical North Queensland, in Cairns. And in the six years since the bacteria was used, there's not been a case of dengue fever in the release areas. Am I right, Professor? It's also being piloted in uh, Brazil and Colombia and India, Vietnam and some Pacific nations. And we're seeing great success. So Australia is contributing um, 116 million rupees, about a million Australian dollars, to this longer term project, uh, which is using um, pioneering research. So bringing together the magnificent research capabilities of Monash University with your skilled medical and health practitioners, we should make a significant difference to the life of those here in Sri Lanka. And of course, this will be uh, an example for the region, an example globally. So Australia is very delighted to be able to partner with Sri Lanka in this way. So thank you, um, Minister, for being part of this announcement today, and I hope it's another example of how Australia can make a practical difference to the lives of Sri Lankans. Thank you. Honourable Julie Bishop, the Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs from Sri Lanka, from uh, Australia, and our Honourable Ravi Rakkarnanayake, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, the State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honourable Basanta Siranayake, and our uh, the High Commissioner of Australia in Sri Lanka, and all the distinguished ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, let me thank Honourable Julie Bishop, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, for Australia for this important announcement on Australia's assistance to the Dengue Elimination Program in Sri Lanka. Dengue is a public health pro pro uh, problem in Sri Lanka and my ministry has developed a sustainable Dengue Prevention and Control Program due, uh, aiming to reduce the morbidity and mo mortality due to Dengue to an event that it will no longer be a major health issue by 2020. To this end, I believe Sri Lanka's engagement with the Eliminate Dengue program, researchers at Monash University, is timely and helpful to implement our sustainable dengue prevention and control program effectively. We have just exchanged a letter of intent to participate in the program and, on the, on, and once the details are finalized, is a written agreement concerning the project will be entered into by both sides. I take this opportunity also to thank the University of Monash to this offer and my ministry looks forward to work with them very closely. Thank you very much. Thank you.